Okay, so in this uh, next exercise, which is understanding the results, we look at a closer, um, I mean, uh, we take a closer look at uh, the post-processing mode. Um, if you have not uh, followed the previous exercises, you can open up my bridge underscore five that std file and just uh, follow the instructions uh, uh, given in this module, okay? So uh, with that, uh, I'm just going to go back to my uh, uh, the bridge model that I've been working on. <coughs> Here, uh, in this model, uh, we issued the perform analysis command, and what we did was we clicked on analyze, run analysis, okay? Now, once the uh, analysis is complete, it gives us three options, okay? You can go to the output file, which is a text file. You can go to the post-processing mode, or you can stay in the modeling mode. So what I want you to do is basically click on go to post-processing mode, and if you click on that, it'll give you this dialog box. Just click on OK, and it'll show you the post-processing mode, okay? Now the first thing that uh, you get to see is basically the displaced uh, shape of the structure, okay? Right now, it's showing you displacement for the lateral load case. You can pick uh, any of these loadings, like let's say uh, load case number two, which is preload step number one, okay? So if you press the control key and hold it down and roll the roller button away from you, okay, you'll see that the displaced Men diagram actually is exaggerated, right? Now, if you go to the other load cases, okay, you'll see, you know, different sort of deflection diagrams depending on which load case you're looking at, okay? If you want to see the loadings for each load case, there is an option called loads. You can click on this icon loads and it'll show you loadings also, okay? So you can understand basically where you get maximum deflection. So for example, load case number nine, maximum deflection is where you have that distributed load. Okay, you can see graphically uh, where those displacements are. Now, on the left-hand side, click on displacement again. Let's uh, try to make sense uh, numerically how uh, the results are, uh, are presented. Okay, so uh, in the graphics, if I click on any no point, say that no point, okay, uh, on the right hand side, it shows me that the information about that node, okay, it's like node number 92. These are the load combination, I mean, load cases that are included, uh, I mean, are, are presented, the results for which, uh, I mean, the, these are the load cases for which the results are presented. You can see, um, uh, you, know, f you know, say for example, load case number nine, we have negative 0.330 inches of displacement for that node point, okay? So uh, if you go to the summary, summary will actually show you maximum and minimum uh, deflections, okay? When we say maximum, maximum means maximum positive displacement. And when we say negative, we say, you know, it's, it's maximum uh, negative displacement, okay? So I'll say, for example, if you go to maximum Y, minimum Y, uh, what it is telling me is the maximum, minimum Y, which is the minimum, uh, maximum negative displacement, it has, it occurs at node number 96. Uh, coincidentally, it was probably the same node that we were looking at. Uh, and also, it tells us that load case number eight, okay, let's go to load case number eight. It's this load case that actually generates the maximum displacement and the Y displacement is 0 0.337 inches, okay? So that's how the results are, are presented. Now, uh, these, suppose you wanted to uh, make these results uh, applicable to only say the right inside cantilever, okay? What you could do is you can uh, you know, right click in these tables and you can just say uh, result setup. Now, if you had a group assigned to the cantilever members, uh, then, then you, can, you can see the results for the cantilever members only. But again, we'll show you how to create groups, okay? So let's close this dialog box. Let's go to the modeling mode. 
And what we'll do is we'll form a group of these cantilever beam members, okay? Now, this is not in the manual. So if you go to view from positive Z and you, you I mean, if you open up the data set, it might have that, that uh, group created. But let's just create, I mean, select that cantilever uh, portion, okay? Um, we can go to tools menu, create new group, and click on create. It'll ask you for the group name. Uh, for the group name, we'll just say Canty Lever, okay? So, so let's just make up a group, okay? Okay, so uh, you can just call it C A N T, okay? And uh, we'll just say Okay, oh, that's okay. And click on OK, and it'll create that group for you. Now click on Associate. So what that'll do is it'll associate that can those members that are selected with that group name, which is Cantilever, okay? So you see we have, if you click on Right Support Highlight, it highlights the right support. If you click on Cantilever Highlight, it'll select the Cantilever beams. Now let's click on analyze run analysis. Whenever you make a change to the stat file, you need to rerun the analysis, okay? So we run the analysis again, and we'll click on go to post processing mode, click on done, click on okay, and we're back into post processing mode. Now, these results that you see are applicable to all node points in the model, okay? But suppose you wanted to see the results for the for the cantilever portion only. So you can, what you can do is you can right click in these tables, click on results setup, and then click on range, group, and you can say, I want to look at results for the cantilever group only. So click on the OK button. And now if you look at each and every node point it is actually a cantilever node point. Okay, if you go to the summary, the maximum Y displacement is no longer 0 0.3 inches, but it's like 0 0.115 inches, okay? And it's like the extreme <coughs> uh, right inside corner of the of the structure, right? So, so, you, so this is the way you can get maximum and minimum displacements. You don't have to go to Excel or any other program, uh, you know, to filter these results, okay? Okay, so similarly, we'll present to you uh, support reactions, okay? That might not be that important for you. Um, it's just for your, for your information. Um, we also present to you moment diagrams. So on page uh, 96 of your manual, figure six shows you a moment diagram. On the left-hand side, click on beam. If you pick a load case, you can see a moment diagram for any given load case. Okay, you press control key on your on your keyboard, hold it down, and roll the roller button away from you. Okay, and it'll you'll be able to see you know moments, okay, in a given beam. So you can pick any any load case. So let's say load case number eight, okay? So here we have you know a moment beam moment diagram for load case number eight, okay? You can actually pick the physical beams cursor, select the physical beam, double click on it. It'll show you shear bending moment diagram for the whole beam member, okay? Depending on which load case you're looking at. Say this is load case number eight. And, and it'll show you like a whole bending moment diagram. You can get the values of bending moment at any point along that physical beam, okay? Same applies for, to, uh, in the case of deflection in, say, the global Y direction, and we'll just say load case number eight. So this is the deflection diagram global for load case number eight, okay? So um, now, um, suppose you wanted to see the loadings also at the same time, you can press the load skirt icon. It'll show you the load uh, loadings also similar to what you see in figure seven, page 96. Okay, if you wanted to see deflections at the same time, there's a deflection icon, there it is. And you can see deflections also, okay? But your scale has to be set up properly. So suppose you wanted to 
scale something you can turn off you know two of them okay and turn them on again okay but if you try to do it at one time it'll actually scale everything okay uh, now let's go to to forces okay on the forces on the right hand side it reports axial forces shear forces moments for each member every, every single member in the model and uh, and you can click on summary which will give you the maximum fx maximum fy maximum moments and so on okay now you can use your grouping to make sense out of these results also okay now let's go to stresses and on the right hand side of your screen i mean in, in sorry in your screen on the left hand side you should be able to see uh, a, a diagram of the whole structure you can pick any member and for that member it'll show you like a 3d stress distribution diagram for any load case that you select okay so you can you can see stress values on the right hand side for any stress plane okay, you can move that stress plane up and down and on the right hand side it'll show you the stress uh, values for that stress plane okay if you go to graphs it'll show you shear bending moment diagrams and axial force diagrams for any member that you click in the graphics okay so oh, those were crosses so now uh, let's uh, go to animation animation will basically animate any deflected shape for you uh, so this is like you know, the deflected shape for one of the loadings, uh, which is the load case number eight, load at the center, um, vertical load test step one. Now, um, there are several other features in this post processor uh, that you can use, but uh, what I'm going to rather do is uh, show you one more thing. If you go to modeling and if you right click and go to labels, okay, I'm on step number uh, step number 21, page 99. And if you click on force, sorry, uh, if you go to loads and results, you can click on force limits tab okay like in, in the in the uh, sorry uh, you can you can actually go to force uh, limits tab and here you can specify you know like stress values so let's say this is in psi so we'll just say 500 psi to negative to positive 500 psi you know if it's in that range i want those to be colored in green if it's outside that range color them in red okay so if you click on apply you'll see a stress distribution diagram and you know basically which members are outside the range of 500 psi okay uh, similarly you can see do the same thing for say 30 ksi uh, or 36 KSI, okay, which is the yield strength of steel. Now, uh, so that completes our post processing uh, portion of uh, this module, okay, and uh, uh, in uh, the next exercise, which is exercise number 13, we'll look at how to design this uh, structure or do a code check on this structure using AIC 36005 code.